inscribed angles. An, inscri an inscribed angle is an angle with its vertex on the circle with two sides that are chords. So an example of an inscribed, or, uh, <laughs> inscribed angle is A, B, C, because its vertex B lies on the edge of the circle, as opposed to a central angle where it would come from P. So if I drew from P to A and P to C, that would be a central angle. An intercepted arc is the arc that lies between the end points of an inscribed angle. So the intercepted arc here would be AC. The degree of an inscribed angle is equal to half the measure of its intercepted arc. So for example, if this degree of this arc AC was 30 degrees, then the angle at B would be 15. So from the edge to the angle, you divide it by half. Intercepting a diameter. If an inscribed angle intercepts a diameter, then it is a right angle. So the measure of BAC, this guy right here, is 90 degrees. Let me highlight what's going on here. So AB and AC create an inscribed angle. The corresponding arc to that angle is BC. The angle arc measure of BC is 180 degrees. And then that corresponds back to this angle measure which is 90 degrees. So you're still going, you're reducing by half. So if this arc is 180 degrees, directly back into its inscribed angle is 90. Overlapping arcs. If two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So the measure of ABD, so a, B, D, this angle measure here, is equal to the measure of angle A, C, D. So A, C, D right here. Now the reason that's true is because they share this arc between them, A, C. So C to A, C to D matches B to D, B to A. So their endpoints are in the same place. Their angles match their endpoints at the same arc. That's why it's called an overlapping arc. So let's try some examples. Find each angle and arc measure. So if this is 62 degrees, to go to its inscribed angle, WXY, WXY, we divide it in half, 62 divided by two, 31 degrees. All right, we know the inscribed angle DEF, and we'd like to know arc D to G to F, and it's three letters, so that's a major arc, D to G to F all the way around, so this whole arc here. So if we're going from the inscribed angle out to its arc, we multiply by two, so 113 times two, which is gonna be 226 degrees. All right, we'd like to know angle PQR, PQR, which its endpoints are on a diameter. So this measure is 180 degrees. Going back to its inscribed angle is going to be a 90 degrees. Why don't you try a couple? Why don't you try this one on your own?
All right, number five. So this is 53 and this is 65. Then this arc here, we would do 53 plus 65 minus 360, which is gonna leave this 242. And then if we want our angle measure that matches it, JKL, we're going backwards, so you divide that by two, so 121. We want RST, so we wanna know what RST is, this angle measure, and we'd like to know what RUT is, so RUT. I can see that both of those share the arc length, or I'm, I'm sorry, the arc measure, RT, those are overlapping arcs. So if this is 64, 139, and 75, we add those up and subtract from 360, which leaves us with an 82 degrees here. And when we go backwards, we divide by two, so it's gonna be 41 degrees. And because they're overlapping, they share the same measure, so 41 degrees for both. Find each value or measure, solve for X. So from our angle measure to its corresponding inscribed arc measure, it's a half or double relationship. So you can decide which one is going to be more advantageous. I would say that maybe in this case, it's easier to divide this by two and set it equal to your inscribed angle. So 158 divided by two is 79. So 79 degrees is equal to 8x minus 9, so 158 divided by two, so then plus nine, so that's gonna be 88 equals eight X divided by eight, and X equals 11. <clears throat> okay, so this one has reverse um, expressions. This one's got just a regular degree measure, and this one's got um, uh, expression. So remember that when you're going from your inside angle out to your arc, it would be multiplying it, like this is the smaller one, this is the larger one, so you would multiply by two. So you could do 67 times two, or you could divide each of these expressions in half. I'm just gonna show it um, by uh, dividing by two, just so that we're consistent. So we've got a two X plus 29 equals 67 minus 29, so then we've got 2x equals 38, and x divided by 2, x equals 19. All right, solve for x. I can see that 13x minus 1 is inside of an inscribed angle that corresponds to a diameter, so if this y w is a diameter, then this is 180 degrees. And when you divide it in half, it's going to be 90. So 13 x minus 1 equals 90. Plus 1, 13 x equals 91. Divide by 13 and x equals 7. All right, this next one, it kind of looks like a diameter, but don't be fooled. What's happening here is that they're saying that this angle measure corresponds to the arc measure x, y, but I don't know the arc measure x, y. What I do know is that this inscribed angle is 114, which means that its corresponding arc, which was all the way from y to w, that's gonna be double 114, which is gonna be 228. Then I know 78 and 228 and this missing arc of x, y, so 228 plus 78 minus 360 leaves me with 54 degrees for that uh, chunk. And then if we're going by half again, so 54 divided by two, so that's gonna be 27 equals seven x plus six. Minus six, seven x equals 21 divide by seven and x equals three. Solve for x. So we'd like to know its corresponding arc measure, but I don't know it yet. Again, 92 plus 162 minus 360 is 106 degrees. 
When I go in, we divide it by half, so that's going to be a 53 equals 7x minus 10. Add 10, 7x equals 63. Divide by 7, and x equals 9. Okay, so this one, I know an angle measure and an expression and then this inscribed angle. So what we're end up gonna, what I would like to do is I would like to use my 360 degree knowledge here. So I'm gonna use my 67 and double it to get this QS arc measure, which is gonna be 134 degrees. Then we're gonna add all that up. So 120 plus 134 plus 5X plus 21 equals 360. Then if we combine those and subtract from 360, we're gonna have 5x plus 21 equals 106. Minus 21, 5x equals 85. Divide by five and x equals 17. All right, if FGH, this angle here, is 6x plus 21, and the arc FJH, the major arc FJH, its corresponding arc is 7x minus 28, we'd like to know what is the actual arc measure of FJH. Well, we know the relationship between these two is double or half, depending on which direction you're going. I think doubling is the easier way to go. So you always take the smaller angle and double it to make your larger arc. So two times 6x plus 21 equals our larger, x, um, larger arc, 7x minus 21. So that's going to be 12x and then plus 42 equals 7x minus 21. Then minus 7x, so then we get 5x plus 42 equals negative 21. Minus 42, 5x equals negative 70. Divide by 5. No, oh, did I mess up? Let's see. Minus 7, minus 42, Oh, it's because it's 17. My bad. I'm sorry. So that's still a 5x. What am I missing? Oh, and I wrote 21 instead of 28. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's try that again. So then now if we add 28, that's going to be... I'm sorry. Let's try that again. 12x plus 42 equals 17x minus 28. Add, uh, let's subtract 12x then. <laughs> then we get 42 equals 5x um, minus 28. Add 28, 5x equals 70. There we go. And x equals 14. And then we plug that back into our um, arc. That's why I wrote... I wrote it wrong on my diagram. There we go. Then we plug it back in to get our um, arc measure. So that's going to be a 17 times 14 minus 28. So then that's going to be 210 degrees. All right, this one almost goes through the diameter, but not quite. So we know STU is 5x minus 16. SU is 12x minus 50. Similar process here, we want to double the smaller one and make it equal to the larger. So 2 times 5x minus 16 equals 12x minus 50. So then 10x minus 32 equals 12x minus 50. Then if we subtract 10, so then we get 2x and then we add 50, that's going to be 18. So 2x equals 18, divide by 2, and x equals 9. And then it wants the angle measure STU, so we'll plug it back into STU. So 5 times 9 minus 16, which is going to be 29 degrees. All right, 6x plus 26 is ABD. 
so that's this guy. And ACD is this guy. And they share this arc measure of AD. So that means that they are gonna be the same. So 6x plus 26 equals 13x minus nine. They're the same measure. So minus six is gonna be seven X and plus nine is gonna be 35. So X equals five. Oop, I didn't mean to circle that. We need to plug it back in to get the measure of AD. So first we're gonna plug it into one of the angle measures. Let's just pick one that looks friendly. So the six times five plus 26, 30 plus 26 are 56 degrees. So this angle measure is 56 degrees. And when you match it to its arc, we double it. So AD is 112 degrees. All right, last one. If KJL is 3X plus 2, K, KJL, this guy, is 3X plus 2, and KLJ, KLJ, is 7x minus 32, find KL. So we'd like to know what's this guy. Um, what we do know is that this angle measure right there at the vertex K is 90 degrees because it corresponds to our half circle, our semicircle. So I know that's a 90 degree angle. So then when we take it all, we can add it to, we can add these two angle measures to 90 or all three of them to 180. I'll do, I'll, because we know that three angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. So we have 3x plus 2 plus 7x minus 32 plus 90 equals 180. 7 and 3 is 10x. 2 and uh, negative 32 is negative 30 minus 90 equals 90. Add 30, so 10x equals 120. Divide by x and x equals 12. So then we need to plug that back into the corresponding one, the inscribed angle that corresponds to kj. So that's going to be the kjl, the kjl. So that's going to be a 3 times 12 plus 2, which is going to be 38. So now this angle measure here is 38 degrees. And when we correspond it, we double it. So KL is going to be 76 degrees. Thank you.